TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live. By the time you see this, we won't be, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, we do got merch, got mine on, you get me. We also got Patreon, we post Monday through Friday. Five days a week, there is paid for content on there. And there's free content, you know what I'm saying? Like a little OnlyFan type, no, I'm just playing. Uh, don't forget, man, if you want to rewatch a live, man, and you miss it, just go to twitch.com, type in the lit one, and you're there, man. The link to everything I mentioned is down below. This is the filthiest flat in London. Okay, we just started watching this last week, so this is from a channel called Filth Salute. Let's get into it. All over our cities, along our coastlines and across our green and pleasant land. Like I honestly, like when I watch this and I be seeing like the UK, like I really can't really speak that much because I know America is worse. I know America got some different type of filth in their houses. An invisible no, we're not world of this. extreme cleanest horseman to pick. In Enfield, North London, extreme cleaner Nick has been called to a private flat. At the moment, we're unsure exactly what is behind these doors, but we do know the RSPCA have been here and taken cats away. The guess is it's going to be in quite a bad state. Make this your... Dang, they hit us with an immediate commercial. I'm talking about key and door commercial. Nick doesn't have to look for any clues. The problems are obvious. Well, yeah, it's quite quite an odour in here, let's put it that way. <laughs> At this moment, Nick couldn't stand his job. Floor space is limited as well, because there's uh, quite a lot of, uh, well, vodka bottles, to be fair. Um, I think this person who overlived here has been a bit of a drinker. Nick has to quote a price for cleaning and clearing the flat now that the tenant has been evicted. Whoever lived here uh. clearly liked to drink and was very partial to cats. Lots and lots of them. Cats and vodka, this look like depression. The first thing I'm pointing out here is the bath, which is absolutely horrendous. It is absolutely chock-a-block with cat feces. That is pretty horrendous. You've got cat mess all around the floor. How someone could live like this, I do not know. Probably have to drink a lot of vodka to be in this place anyway. <laughs> the living room isn't much fun either. There again, vodka bottles, more cat mess. Um, infestation of flies here. This is really bad. I mean, that that is gross. All of yeah, this is going to have to be cleared. Appreciate it's, a big the job, it's not a big flat, but this is a big job. And then there's the bedroom, and finally the kitchen. It's a little bit cruel on the animals. Uh, looking at that, Seven that months. aspect as well. We've got a pretty grimy fridge. I mean, there's things living in this fridge. This flat tells a depressing story. I told you, there's depression. Nick is determined to give it a happy ending. It's quite rewarding when you've actually done something good. Something good's come out of this, you know, in the end. And then hopefully someone, a family or an individual can come back here and uh, live a normal life in a normal environment. That's. Uh, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Like, at, like, if I was to rent this flat, did they give a warning? Like, warning. This was terrible at one point. Like, what what we doing? Like, it got to be like roaches. Do y'all got roaches in the UK? It has to be. So that's the idea. But cleaning up all this is going to be pricey. It's not going to be a cheap job, and it's not going to be a quick job, but it's got to be done properly. Because uh, eventually someone can live back in here, but it's going to be a bit of time before they can even consider coming back in here. Nick will now work out the cost of the job and hope the owner will... Coming back in here. Nick will now work out the cost of the job... Oh, my God, I see something crawling right here. You seen it? ...and hope the owner will agree the contract. The owner ain't got no choice. This is horrific. It's 9am in Grimsby, and Enforcement Officer John, known as the Sheriff of Grimsby, has a giant-sized problem to deal with in a local car park. But nothing phases our John. The problem we're here to deal with is this behind me, a metal storage container. Um, we've known about it for some time. We've spoken to the alleged um, owner or keeper of it. It is in a public right-of-way. My job today, unfortunately, is to remove it to uh, a correct storage location. 
Just get rid of it is John's first thought, but it's not that simple. What we've got to do is break into it because I'm not able to permit, obviously, the carrying of anything hazardous. Young Ats, happy birthday. So you turned 22 today, that's what's up. Uh, happy birthday. So we're just about to get the contract to cut the locks and then we'll see what's inside and take the appropriate action. This is definitely not a case of hey presto. We check the locks out. We now find that it's got a central lock that is pretty substantial. It's going to take some getting in. But I'm sure you got it sorted, don't you, John? We're just waiting for the correct equipment to come up, which will be here in the next five or ten minutes. And That's it. People be living in these. I can imagine. We'll cut the lock and then we can see what we're dealing with. The delay attracts those with time on their hands. Right, now go away. Keep your away. John decides to give those responsible for the container a final warning. No, it doesn't appear that um, anyone's uh, home at the moment. It's a futile attempt, and John knows the local mood is against him. <laughs> this could get... John better call 999. ...rather tricky. Dang, they just sat out and camped out for you? I think that's the uh, sad way that society seems to have gone, but hopefully, uh, not just me, but many people like me. Oh, there we, they go. We, we plow on, we go on, we strive to hopefully someday restore some form of order. <laughs> John is heavily outnumbered. There be... John is really... I want to let y'all know, like, I, I went to go get YouTube Premium and it was $20 and I just couldn't... <laughs> couldn't bring myself to it. The Sheriff of Grimsby calls for a posse. When it looked as if a key wasn't necessary, it appears. But then, another problem. It can't actually be moved in its current condition because there's an extremely strong smell um, of petroleum spirit. Uh, certainly there are flammable Gas? materials in there mixed with flammable substances. I'm surprised that it's not already um, burst into flames of its own accord, to be honest, because there is the right mixture in there to cause that. The fire brigade will have to... Is he a chemist? How do you know? ...to make sure it's safe. But that will take time, and the mood of the crowd isn't improving. No point, no point arguing. John still doesn't know if the contents are dangerous. In Enfield, the owner of the one-bed flat has accepted Nick's quote, so he can start the work immediately. It's good news for Nick, but he doesn't have to do the work. That's for Steve, Bertram, and Dave. Oh God, I'd throw up every day at work if I did this type of this work. Work is work. I salute anybody who's you know out there doing nine to five, hustling and bustling. Um, you know, I worked up until I was 29. You know what I'm saying? After that 29th, after I got fired, it was over. I was already doing YouTube, so I just jumped in, you know, fully. I was doing other things also to support myself, but I don't do those things anymore. And YouTube is the the greatest thing. <laughs> Bertram is not impressed. Now we're getting to see the full view of it, and it is really outstanding mocky. The flat was home to a multitude of cats, so Steve must take precautions before the boys can start the clear-up. Just spray it in case any fleas in here. Cats, dogs cause fleas and that. So Put your mask on. Can never be too careful. Bertram's found some unwelcome visitors in the bedroom. Bed bug. They're going inside. Y'all do got bed bugs. I asked this last episode, do y'all got bed bugs? Y'all said not really. Cat. <laughs> Cat. Hide your clothes, go home with you inside your bed so the first thing you have to do is kill them it may seem a tough way to earn a living but not for bertram i look forward to all this type of job that's a job really i specialize in most of all because i enjoy doing it going inside see something like this get to read all the bugs and look forward to There's doing a more while brian starts to clear the hoard of vodka bottles Steve tries to work up an appetite. Steve getting that sandwich for his lunch in the fridge for about two years. It's my favourite sandwich, chicken and stuffing. Can't beat this <laughs> with a bit of meal. <laughs> Bertram soon finishes spraying. So now oh, I think the place is sanitised and good for us to go on do our job. Now the boys can get stuck in. Steve's wasting no time in the kitchen. The dirtier the job, the better. 
the smellier the better, trust me. So not many people really want to do the dirt, dirty, dirty jobs, but some of us just don't mind it. Right. What? Zip your jacket. Like, this is a sanitary job. Like, you gotta remain clean. Y'all be in here maskless. My hoodie would have been on. I would have had, like, two pair of gloves on. You know what I'm saying? I would have had goggles, face masks, and then I would have seen the bed bugs. Like, I need to make sure I got rubber bands around the wrist and the ankle parts of my thing, of my pants. Matter of fact, I need my pants to go over my shoe. Like, I need a onesie because I don't want to take nothing home. Like, this is beyond me. I didn't know I was this appalled at dirt and filth until just until I started. What? I, no, I knew. I'm capping. I knew. I knew I didn't like this situation. A stench coming off some of these. And you know, rotten food, meat, it's good for you. I wasn't Despite raised the like disappointing this. sandwich, Steve is still on the lookout. Not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and whoever the production team of with this video, they know Steve. Got the chicken? Is, Steve gonna try to smell everything. That's tough. Now that smells, that is a bit bad one. Chicken breast with creamy wild mushroom. There's a little, little party going. Spraying is the easy bit. Bertram's now got to get to grips with the problem. It's a bit shocking when you first get to it. And when you see it, you don't know where to start. Should I start here or there? But finally you have to just get down and start somewhere. Steve is never one to balk at a challenge but it can still be distressing. Like the fact people can actually live like Oh, they got the garbage at the, at the, at the window, okay. It is, and there's nobody out there to help me. Yeah, it does shock us. But there's always people like us around to clean up after them. The kitchen is much improved, but it's been a long day. The boys can now head off, but they'll be back tomorrow to deal with the delights of the bathroom. Safe. My boy, whoever lived here turned the tub into a huge kitty litter box like a like a litter box so my second question is like my question about it is like where did he like bathe himself whoever lived there where did they shower like how did they cleanse their body and that might be a dumb question because the answer might be obvious he did not simple as that in the english countryside the grand interiors of national trust Steel. properties seem a world away from an extreme clean in Enfield. But the lavish and highly valuable furnishings can pose problems of their own. The National Trust also has to preserve... Just a heads up, I think we're going to watch like um, one of the exclusive things that we only watch on here. I, I think I'm uh, banged up. Banged up. We're going to watch Banged Up. We haven't watched Banged Up in a minute. Priceless collections of books. This afternoon at Starhead in Wiltshire, Book restorer Caroline is giving a master class on how to clean and care for these treasured possessions. I was always the librarian at school for some reason and I think that I've always enjoyed reading. I think the practical nature of my uh, craft and working with books was something that um, came together very nicely for me. Caroline's main concern is dust and she has an ingenious way of dealing with it. So I need to turn the vacuum cleaner on. We try and contain the dirt so that um, we're not spreading it over the collection. And I'm using a pony hair brush, which is soft enough not to cause abrasion, but it's actually very powerful and removes the dirt very successfully. Cleaning books is a special skill. I hold the book down into this, this, this very basic dusting box and brush from the spine towards the foredge of the book. And then I brush down the foredge and then along the tail of the book. And then I brush the boards. So book got a tail? Book got a foreskin? What did she say? A forehead? What did she say? And then along the tail of the book. And then I brush the boards. And then the spine of the book. This one has got raised bands on it. OK, I know the spine of a book. So I will have to brush this one going across the spine because uh, the What well, is exquisite job. <laughs> this is exquisite. Just collects on the raised bands. And it's not only dust that can do the damage. We have a range of insects that eat books. Um, we have death watch beetle, furniture beetle, carpet beetle, spider beetles, moths and silverfish are the ones that really cause damage. Occasionally also we get rodent damage. But very often the rodent damage is like the sort of contour lines on a map. And we can see on this book um, where the 
paper's been eaten away to, to make a nest. But we all know what the real problem is. Mold. Bookworms. Oh, oh. I suppose the bug that everybody... Bookworms are real? I thought a bookworm was just somebody who just really enjoyed books. I didn't know it was a real insect. What he thinks of being in books is the bookworm, which there isn't such a thing in the insect kingdom, but it's the furniture beetle larvae, the woodworm, that tends oh, to burrow woodworm. through the book. Um, its larger cousin, the death watch beetle, also creates rather large holes in books, but the, the general insect that people think of as eating books is the, is the woodworm. Come the woodworm, that's what she said, but that's crazy though. Yeah. Caroline puts her students through their paces, John summons the fire brigade, Steve's back to tackle the bathroom, and Litter Picker Lou, well, deals with Litter. So do y'all prefer early streams or later streams? Because I could do either one, but it seems like there's more people here in the early one. Well, y'all just let me know. Throughout the country, an army of professionals are continuing to dedicate their daily lives to waging war on the nation's grime. In Enfield, North London, extreme cleaner Steve and his team have returned to tackle the... In Enfield, North... Hey! I... I got a tear in my eye, that's funny. North London, extreme cleaner... They know they can get a bigger size, man. They bogus. Look at bro. He had to look away. It was so funny. Look. Steve and his team have returned to tackle the one-bed flat. That's if only My they bad. can get in. Well, it's not open. They press on regardless. We've got a deep clean the whole house. The only room we've got left to do is the bathroom, which is full of cat's feces, and I'm not really looking forward to that. Me neither. Eventually, yeah. Steve makes it. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. But that's just the start of his problems. As you can see in the buff, full of cat's feces, damp clothes. Obviously, to keep the cat comfortable while it's having its feces in the buff. It's a dirty job. Somebody's got to do it. Even for a veteran like Steve, there's something unusual about this case. First time I've actually seen that much cat's feces in a buff. I've seen a little dollop now and again, but never that much. There's no reason what, whatsoever on earth why people live like this for. She definitely wasn't using this buff, I can tell you that now. Steve's not put off by a... Again, your wrist is exposed, Steve, like this look. One. She definitely wasn't... Look, wrist, your wrist. That's human skin. That's... Oh, my God, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Using this buff, I can tell you that now. Steve's not put off by a little local difficulty. Like, once we finish cleaning this out, somebody will be able to walk in, run the water, and just have a buff straight away without doing anything. And to me, that's good. The bulk of the loose stuff has now been collected, so Steve can plan the deep clean. Just use the could, no, throw the tub away. You just uh, uh, don't you? Can't you just put, get a new tub? But this tub is still usable. Scraper or greeny. Just imagine the selling points to this to this flat to a new owner. Like, you gotta put like if you take baths, yo, yo, you know what I'm saying? Your backside gotta be on like just the thought of it that it was once there would bother me. This once was full to the brim with cat, cat, you know? Like I couldn't do it. I don't take baths, I take showers, but at the same time, like I don't even want my foot on there. Green you know pot, shower, spirit, scrub it. It'll come off, no problems there. What's needed for a job like this? is a very careful, disciplined approach. I could be here all day trying to scrub it off. So the best thing is one of these, which is really a, a window scraper. So it shouldn't mark the buff at all. While Steve is kept busy, the others can continue with the rest of the flat. Within half an hour, the bathroom has been transformed. Look at the difference in this. That makes you proud, doesn't it? No, I don't see a difference. I, I still see it's mentally scarred in my brain, like it's scarred. I will never unsee what I've seen. But it's a pity about the floor. I don't know what they're going to do with that. They'll have to get it, it up. buff it up or so much somehow, but we've tried our best. You could walk in here now and you could, I could use the toilet. You know what I mean? Well, I wouldn't early on, but I could jump in the buff and have a buff. 
So if I had my towel, I would anyway. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. But, nah, there's a big difference, mate. Where's the shower head? Where's the shower head? So you can only take a bath in here? I wouldn't move in. Proud I've done it. The bathroom is stunning. Now it's up to Steve to make the rest of the flat sparkle. Somebody tell me where the shower head was? Why was there no shower head? Is there sometimes showers in... I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a different show where they were separate. In Grimsby, Enforcement Officer John is still trying to remove the giant container. The problem of the missing key has now been solved, but John still has to cope with the added interest his work has brought. Hey, if you're not subbed, I mean not subbed, if you don't follow here, make sure you follow, man. It's nothing like Twitch. having a really anti-aggressive audience, is it? that heart or whatever There's a strong smell of petrol, so John's called the fire service and they're taking no chances. It might look as if we're going over the top here with wearing breathing apparatus when the container's outside, but the issue is, is that is an actual confined space. So as soon as we open that confined space and we actually enter that confined space, we really need to confirm exactly what air we're breathing. We haven't got a clue what's in there. Prepared for the worst, the firefighters take a look. The container is filled with a collection of motorbikes and garage equipment, but it seems there's no real danger. And their findings inside the trailer was that, yes, there are strong odours, yes, there's flammable liquid present, but not at a level that it's um, triggered their explosive um, meters. The mood quickly changes. The crowd, who had got John a bit worried, now help by moving the contents of the container to a nearby garage. The whole... Duh. They're not gonna let y'all take these bikes. The tone in the area has totally changed now. It's almost become carnival-like. Once it's emptied, um, it'll be put back on, on the back of the truck and it'll be taken away and we've restored things to how they should be. My friend, you... Free bikes. I don't know if those were the owners of the bikes, but whatever. It took six hours longer than expected. But at last, a lorry can pick up the container and take it away. At Stourhead in Wiltshire, the volunteer book cleaners are deep into their second day. And it's time for the course leader, Caroline, to set them a test. Where do I start the brush strokes from, remember? From back to front, I think. You're absolutely right. So, so far, 10 out of 10. Every book, and in many cases, every page has to be dusted and inspected. Every single blemish has to be noted. We found some worm damage here. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, you got to love this. You Like, you really, really got to love books. You got to love your job, because this seems tedious. Look how long these books is. These is like dictionaries, each book. Like, like uh-uh. You can be here all year. The worm has come in. It has also got a little hole there, probably where he did enter the book. And it goes all the way through the book as a neat little hole. They can see if the insect damage has got any worse over time. And if necessary, the books can be treated. Bottom of the backboard, there's so damage, here. damage there yeah. as well. Reading all these books. I feel like I'm like watching like, you know when you watch TV for too long and something else come on at night, like at 3 a.m.? Like, this is what I feel like I'm watching. It would take long enough, but cleaning them takes even longer. Roughly about every three to four years, the whole library will have to be cleaned, yeah. which does take... It time. took us nearly 18 months last time to do the complete library. These volunteers love the work. This book was published in 1750. They've got um, some originals of Thomas Hardy here. It's respect. You feel great respect about it. I like it. Six libraries a year, and that's good for the year. If any. I suppose it's always been a bit of an obsession, and um, this is brilliant. It's almost heaven for me to see uh, a library like this. And, you know, I feel that what we're doing is, is really worthwhile, very valuable. I think it's an honour, really do. Never judge a book by its cover. That didn't even fit. <laughs> In 
In Enfield, Steve and the boys are putting the finishing touches to the deep clean. The manager has some thoughts at half time. Good team effort today, definitely good team effort. While Steve has dealt with the bathroom, James has been sorting out the kitchen. How's it going, James? It's going good, mate. See, I'd be in there like James, mask on, glove on, hoodie up. You know what I'm saying? And he just cleaning the stove. Imagine, Steve was in there raw dog in that bathroom. That is crazy to me. Like, bro, put protection on. It's all type of diseases out here. And it's going to be yeah, hard to get the floor 100%. This is just uh, off the cat's faces and all that, stuck with the wood and every other bits and bobs that was in the house, so we've got to scrape it up. After a few hours of hard graft, they've got a result. If you look at the state of this place, how clean it is compared to when we first came in, and I tell you what, I'd move in here tomorrow myself. That's how good I think. I bet you would. I would not, sir. I need y'all to do that like two, three more times. Bring it like a, a industrial steamer and just let it steam up the whole place. And just like, I need new paint like that. This place is it's all clean and maculate. Floors done, walls, windows. Everything's done, so in my eyes, this is a job done. <laughs> yeah, they said Steve about to look at, about to eat a bag of ch chips and look at his fingers. That's disgusting. In Wolverhampton, the city's proudest Lou the litter picker thought his day was over, but he's been called back for an emergency job. What's this? Pebble. Look like an iPhone product. You know, I don't know. Well, here we are again. More rubbish. It's a familiar hunting ground. Slot this van up round here. Set the immobiliser. We don't want to lose the van. While new partners Gary and Sam clear up the surrounding area, Lou shows his feelings. Somebody could. I remember I had to do this for community service. It was the worst. What? 40 hours of my life. I had community service at the YMCA. Y'all got the YMCA out there. I had to fold and wash towels. Like, I was only folding them, though, because after they came out the dryer. Because ain't no way I was touching. You know what I'm saying? Just not doing it. Um, I had to pick up litter in a, in a huge field. I was just walking around the field, like, picking up litter. Like, come on, man. Could have paid somebody to move this from miles away and somebody's drove down here the dead of night and tipped it to you. What do you do? You just move it. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I stopped going to community service. They finished my hours though. They wrote it off. They was like, he, he good. <laughs> Harry is learning <laughs> that Lou's anger is almost always justified. You can't expect the kids to throw, use bins because I mean, when you see some of the parents, you know, them like throwing all the rubbish all over the floor. As the kids get older, I think they can do the same. That's the reason why we've got this problem now. Um, how do you stop ads? All you have to do is subscribe. And Sam is keen to join in. You can never win it around here. You know, you clean up. On Twitch. Clean up and clean up and a few days after, just as back to normal. Obviously they don't care. They don't care how they leave. Stella. You know, because if they did care, they wouldn't live in such a mess all the time. Back at the sharp end, things aren't improving. It's a right mess, so I'm going to have it on the back of this wagon because that's my job. Yeah, I'm just a proud old litter picker from Wolverhampton, just having a bit of fun. Lou has a real thing about cheap black bags. They're very thin, inferior bags. Plus, if there's food in there, you'll get magpies, crows, foxes, badgers, Edgehogs and I just found out y'all got badgers in the UK that just roam freely. To me, that's crazy. Free roaming badgers in the UK, that's tough. The one I haven't mentioned is the worst one of the lot. Rats. You'll get people ring up. There's rats by my house. 
Why have I got rats? They should come to the back doors and look in the back passage. I'll know why they've got rats then. Lou has seen enough rubbish to last a lifetime. Hopefully, in the future, people will recycle. You'll get a tin of tango like that. That's aluminium. That could go to the scrapyard and be melted down. And next week, it's foil. And that's wrapped around your chicken. Then you chuck it. Oh, your... aluminum. And bro said aluminium. I was like, huh? What is aluminium? Is that another, like, thing on a periodic table? Like, what that is? Well, foil in the bin. Not like these people. They chuck the cat on the road. But I'm here. They pick it. it up. That's my job. Even on days like this, Lou has some sunny moments. Is it me you're Salute, Modaki 101. For the sub with Prime. Oh, you did it with Prime. That's salute, man. Never in a thousand years would I think, well, I'm going to clear rubbish off the street. And this is what I'm doing. And do you know, I enjoy it. Do you know why? Because we're fighting the grime. That's what it's all about. And one day, Hopefully, in the future, when I'm retired, there'll be no grime. With the whole app. That's how passionate I am about YouTube. Like, if you're not that passionate about your job or whatever you do in life, stop doing it. It's not the one for you. Just, just stop. Try something else. Area cleared. Lou and the boys can call it a day. I'm happy with today. I've uh, type and knocking off now. See you all, me old muckers. Since the filming okay. of the show, Steve's work on the flat was good enough to attract a new tenant. Oh, they got new floors. John's finally seen the back of that great big container, and Lou's heading home to try to forget all about litter. No, he's not. That man passionate. He's ready for next day at work. Tell a little like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.